loves, this is Bobby, and I'm here with a another video. And yes, this is another TVR readathon video. Ah! Yeah, are you surprised yet? I'm not. <laughs> so this is going to be for the monster a thon that is taking place through the entire month of September Ooh. and it is hosted by chapter Kate I will link everything down below including the video talking about all this I am doing four month long ones so all of the month long ones are getting their own video I'm not sure how I'm gonna break up the other readathons because I'm trying to do 10 readathons this month why because why not at this point I am the queen of readathons at this freaking point in time um and because of the bookopoly I had 15 uh, prompts for that one so 15 bucks and I already had the book so I'm going to try and do this readathon a hundred percent this is a team based readathon I there are three different teams each team has four different prompts and you gain points for every uh, page you read um, and for every page you read, those count as villagers, and whoever ends up terrorizing the most villagers wins. I'm very excited. I've got some pretty hefty books. I've got two really big books on this TBR, so yeah, I'm in it to win it. Um, the different teams are the conspiracy theory team, which have to do with like aliens and stuff like that. The other team are the creatures, um, the and the third team are the haunts, so like ghosts and stuff like that. So I have joined the conspiracy theories. Woo! Um, I was gonna go on one of the other teams, but you know what? This one didn't seem to be getting enough love, so I joined it and also gave me an excuse to wear these cool ass earrings again. Um, so like I said, there are four prompts for every team. Um, you don't have to do your own team's prompts, you can do whosoever you want, but you do get more points for um, finishing your teams. Um, I am going to try and do this 100% everyone's. Why? I'm already reading 15 books, so why not? Um, so this is going to be a lot of crossover between the four month long readathons that I have, so yeah, I am getting creative here. So let's get started because it's going to be a kind of a long video because I've got a lot of books here. Um, this readathon, there is a theme to it which is the haunts or the hangouts, so where you would find the different creatures for the groups. I really like it. The prompts are based around that and it's a lot of fun. Um, so let's get this show on the road. So for the first prompt for the conspiracy theories is Area 51 and that is to read a book featuring aliens or mutants. I am going with a classic. I have never read this book and I'm still surprised I've never read it because I've always enjoyed the story and it's about damn time I get to it. And that is War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Um, this has to do with an alien invasion. Why the hell not? Like, I can knock it over that I have never read this book. So I am going to fix that. Um, what else can I say? It's a classic. For the next prompt is Rear View Mirror. Um, this is to read a book that is was published five years ago or more. Um, this one is definitely a lot longer than that. And this also ties into my Towerathon, and that is Wizard and Glass by Stephen King. This is the fourth book in the Dark Tower series. I'm taking part in the Towerathon where we are um, reading one book a month for this series, which is the Dark Tower series. I've always wanted to read it. I'm enjoying it. Everyone else doesn't seem to be, but I am. Um, this is a chunker coming in at 672 pages. Yikes. But yeah, I need to read it anyway. And that's 600 and, you know, 600 plus villagers that I'm going to terrify, so hells yeah. Um, the Dark Tower series, I'm pretty sure you know about. It's pretty old. 
so I'm not gonna go into that because I still got a lot of books to go. The next prompt is the upside down to read a retelling. I am going to be reading Bl A Blade So Black by Al Al McKinney. Um, this is a Alice in Wonderland retelling where we follow a girl named Alice who she is trained in weapons and she can kick your ass. Um, she also can cross over into Wonderland. She's originally from, I believe it's Atlanta. And her mentor goes missing and she must go into Wonderland and get him back. But this is an R type of Wonderland. Very excited for this one. Um, I've been hearing it a lot mentioned quite a bit lately. So, um, I just recently bought this. This was for my very last haul. I think I got it like last week. So I'm very, very excited for this one. The next prompt is The Bunker, read a book featuring disabilities. I am going to be going with Locked In by John Schalzi. This has to do with a pandemic that is going around which has flu-like symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Um, and when most of the people only get like flu-like symptoms and then they're fine but there is the 1% of the population that gets this um, disease and they end up completely paralyzed um, and they are you know they can't you know go anywhere or anything because I think they're still like considered contagious or not um, I have had this book for years like literal years I don't even remember buying it I think I got it for like a dollar or something like that because I needed the dollar to get free shipping so I bought it I didn't know what it was about when I bought it I just you know it was on sale <laughs> but it sounds really interesting because I think there's like a murder mystery going on in this too so I'm very interested in it and here's to hoping that it works out so that wraps up my team's prompts but like I said I am going to be trying to do all of the prompts so the next team are the creatures and the first one is Whispering Woods. Read a book that you haven't heard about very much or is very underhyped. I've literally never heard about this book at all. It was a cover buy for me and I didn't even know what it was about when I did buy it. And that is An Illusion of Thieves by Kate Glass. This takes place in a fantasy world where magic is outlawed. Um, you could be killed for having magic. Um, this girl, our main character, uh, Rami, she has magic, but she has it hidden. Um, she works in the Shadow Lords, who's their kind of ruler, um, in his household or king, you know, castle, whatever it is. Um, and her brother gets caught thieving and he is using magic and he is going to be executed, but to save him, she offers to take his place. So since she is um well known they end up just exiling her while she's exiled she finds out that there is a plot to kill the shadow lord and start a civil war which she wants to stop so she has to get a band together and they have to try and stop this but they also have to use magic um it sounds really cool but like i said this was a cover by i have never heard anybody talk about it ever the next prompt is the Lair of the Babadook. That is to read a book featuring LGBTQIA plus representation. So this book literally is nothing like any of these other ones. It's the oddball and I have been dying to read it because of Teresa. She talks about it nonstop, like nonstop. And I have been dying, like she's got me so interested in it. And that is the Falling in Love montage by Sierra Smith. This ta this just sounds so cute and it's exactly what I love in contemporary kind of rom com -y type of books and the only time I really read contemporary or rom-com books are if they are LGBTQIA. So I am excited. This takes place between two girls. Um, they are on their summer vacation and one of them has just broken up with her girlfriend and she meets the other girl and they decide to start dating but they want to do the kind of um, rom-com type of dating where you know you skip out all of the 
you know, messy parts of dating and you just kind of have the fun falling in love montages where you go out and, you know, they're going to like carnivals or, you know, you just have these really cute dates and they are supposed to end the relationship at the end of summer because they are both going away to college, I believe it is. This just sounds so cute and like I said, um, Teresa has talked about it nonstop and I'm hooked. I finally gave in. I got my copy and I cannot wait for this one. The next one is Hydra's Hangout and that is to read a book based around a mythological creatures. Um, I count these as mythological creatures. Are they? I don't know but I count them and I already had this book on my TBR so I'm going to be reading Blue Bloods by Melissa De La Cruz. This has to do with vampires. Um, I own this entire series. I have bought in the entire series secondhand and I've never read it. I've owned it for quite a while. Um, over the years I have been collecting them because they always seem to find me. No matter where I'm at, I find one of the books and I've ended up with the entire series without starting it. And like I said, they've been on my shelf four years. So this takes place in New York where a girl has moved in with, I believe it's her grandmother and um she is going to like an elite school but you know she's not like other girls that's got me a little worried but mm. um and she ends up finding out that she is a blue blood or she her blood runs blue and um she meets a vampire and things go from there this sounds super cheesy but i like i said i've had the whole series so i'm super interested in reading it and finally getting around to it so I can either find out if I love it or I can unhaul like seven books because this is a pretty long series. The next book is one of the most anticipated ones for me and that is for the prompt, Ma Swamp. That's a nice looking boulder. I like that boulder. And that is to read a book with a very beautiful cover. I literally bought the 14 book series kind of not series connecting books because of the covers because they were beautiful and that is the well of ascension by brandon sanderson this is the second book in the mistborn trilogy i am dying to get to this but this is a chunker this is like almost seven, this is over 700 pages so yeah yeah at least that's gonna get me a shit ton of villagers. Um, I do not know what this one is about. I have gone, this is my third Brandon Sanderson book and I go in not knowing anything about it and I have enjoyed them. They've all been five stars so far. But this takes place in a world where the magic is based around metals. You, the certain people can ingest metals and they gain powers. Most of them can only ingest one type of metal but there are the Mistborns who they can ingest multiple types and get different powers. I love the magic system in here. It is so thought out and amazing and has me hooked. Brandon Sanderson's writing is freaking phenomenal. Um, like I said, I don't know what this one is about, even though the first book tore out my heart and stomped on it. Oh, did it. But I am so damn excited to get to this one like there are no words okay so we're on to the last team prompts and that are those are the haunt the first prompt is under the bed and that is to read a book by an indigenous or black author who you've been sleeping on i have wanted to read this book for quite a while i did start it but i hit a super bad reading slump and i ended up putting it down and I just never got around to it again and I am so glad to finally do that because this sounds right up my alley and everything that I would like. And that is Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. This takes place during the or after the Civil War. Um, zombies have risen up and they have started training the um, these black girls to protect the white households. Um, like I said, I only got a few pages in. I think I maybe got two, three chapters in, but I was really liking it, but I was just not feeling anything at the time. I think I DNF'd like 12 books during that slump. 
so yeah I am so glad to get to this one I really liked the main character she was very witty and just I loved it um and I liked the banter with the other girl that she had met but I don't really remember too much else about that like I said I didn't get very far in so I am super excited for this and I love me some fucking zombies the next one is the secret crypt and that is to read a book with a mysterious element this was another one that I had DNF'd at the same time as Dread Nation and I am trying to finish all of these books that I have started before and that is The Isle of Blood by Rick Yancey. This is the third book in the Monstromologist series. The first two books are freaking phenomenal, especially the second one which is The um, Curse of the Windigo. That book is terrifying and heartbreaking and has an amazing love story that just ripped my heart out and I loved every damn page of that one. I am so excited to finally get back into the series. There's only one other book after this one and I definitely cannot wait for that one either. Um, this follows the story of a boy named Will Henry and he is the assistant for a monstromologist named Dr. Withrump. Worthrop, Worthrop? I can never say his name right, Worthrop. Um, he studies the creatures that people do not believe in, um, like the Wendigo. The first book has these creatures, I cannot remember the name of them for to save my life, I keep meaning to look it up, but they are like these creatures that are like a human body, but they have no head and they have a mouth on their stomach. The first book freaking was terrifying and you can totally hear my dogs moving around, sorry. Um, but with this one, Will Henry has been let go by the monstromologist and he is starting to live a normal life like he's kind of been wanting. But then he, the new assistant that Dr. Worthrop has um, taken in has came back from the Isle of Blood and is saying that Worthrop is dead. Will Henry doesn't trust him so he travels there to find out where he is, what happened. My child wants some. Yes, yes, I, I, I see you. This is my this is my baby girl Banshee. Yes, she fits in with this very well, doesn't she? She she is named after a mythical creature. Huh? Get down my Banshee girl. Get down my Banshee girl. Okay. Hey, sit, 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 stay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So he travels to the Isle of Blood to go find out what happens because he wants to know where this man is. <laughs> hey. Okay, go sit down. Go sit down. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I see your paw. Okay, <laughs> I'm good. Okay, Banshee, stop. <laughs> the curse of sitting on the floor. I never usually sit on the floor, but my shelves are a mess, and I wasn't done with them and wasn't gonna show that because it's 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 terrible. But yeah, very excited for this one. Cannot wait to get into it. Sorry about that. She wanted to be let out. So, the la the second to last prompt is your friendly neighbor's house. And this is to read a book that was recommended to you. This book specifically wasn't rec recommended to me, but it was the series and I'm counting it because I want to read it. And I don't care it was recommended to me like multiple times and that's when I finally bought it and that is going to be the third book in the Mistborn trilogy and that is The Heroes of Ages by Brandon Sanderson um like I said since I don't know what the second one's about I definitely don't know what the third one's about but I am very excited because this series was recommended to me by multiple people and thank every single one of them and I am hooked. I cannot wait. This is another chunky boy. And oh, how the hell I'm going to get in three giant books like this, I don't know, but I'm going to figure it out. So, cannot wait. Alrighty, so for the last prompt is a moment of peace, and that is to read a comfort book. Um, a lot of people I think we're going to be doing rereads and stuff like that. I almost did, but you know what? This one I know is going to be a comfort read. It is a um, middle grade and it sounds wonderful and it just sounds like something that I'm going to be happy and enjoy every moment of it. And that is The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Um, this 
follows the story of a witch who she lives um like outside of this village in a forest and everyone thinks that she's this evil witch who is there to terrorize them and everything but she's a friendly witch but village offer a sacrifice to her which is a baby every year and she doesn't know why they keep giving her a baby she just takes the babies and gives them to another village you know on the other side of the forest um but she feeds the babies um i believe it's starlight um, but when it comes to the next year, she ends up with another baby and she accidentally gives her moonlight and um, the young girl ends up getting powers and we go from there. Um, I have seen this book recommended so many times. It sounds absolutely wonderful and it sounds like something that I would 100% love. So I am very, very excited for this one. I cannot wait. Um, what else can I say? It just sounds so cute and I love the magic in middle grade books because it is a, usually a very soft magic system and I love that and it's just so whimsical and that's all I'm hoping for. Like I'm going into this one just wanting something really sweet. So there we go. There is the end of this TBR. Um, I still have two more to go. But I am very happy with these picks. Like I said, most of these are crossed over, crossovers from the Bookopoly. So, yeah. But I am going to attempt to do them all. Fingers crossed. I can get it. And I can get some good points in for my team. So, because I've got some chunky boys in here. And since every page counts for a villager my Brandon Sanderson books alone are well over a thousand so let's do this let's do this if you are taking part in the monster thon I'd love to know if you have a TBR video up I'd love to watch it I absolutely adore watching TBR videos so drop the link down below um, and if I would love to know what team you're on if you are also on team conspiracy this bump <laughs> so thanks for watching if you like this give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and as always happy reading bye